You may have got to this video by looking up Ultimate Defrag 3, the key to a cleaner partition, a partition of efficiency, a partition of speed. You're viewing a video of a series I made for fellow simmers. Certain terms like FSX are not important to this explanation. They are but mere files and folders that you can pretend are your favorite porn folder for all I care. The relevancy of the subject matter is still one and the same. No animals have been hurt or molested in the creation of this video. All names of penguins in this video have been changed to protect the penguins. Now I leave you with a picture of my sneaker for no particular reason while I fade to black and start this video. Welcome back, boys and girls. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about drive maintenance and the importances of it. Because in today's day and age, and that day being 2012, and it is the first, by the way, so Happy New Year, I want to talk a little bit about what fragmentation is and why you should do drive maintenance. Well, looking at my computer right now, I'm in the middle of actually doing a computer for my brother, so I'm without two hard drives because I'm using those serial ATA cables in his computer. So here is my operating system hard drive, my drive C, and here is my everything else drive, or my FSX drive. Now this is very full. I have 61 gig free out of 300 gig here. So if we look in here, you can see that I have just various things. I record my videos in my fraps folder on this drive, and that's one reason why my videos aren't so craptastic. And I have my Gex backup, and I have my Act um, Active Sky 2012, and I have a lot of Photoshop stuff here. Um, we're talking this right here is 99% of that. Well, okay, it's 89.6 gig. My hanger is where I have my FSX install, which is 116 gig. Okay, and I still have more to go. So when we're talking about fragmentation or the need to defrag your hard drive, we're talking about mechanical drives. We're not talking about SSD drives or solid state drives. I'm sure we'll see software for that if it's not out already. But what we're really concerned about here is the mechanical drive and how it works and how it gets fragmented to begin with. Try to imagine that you just came home from, say, the grocery store. And right before you got home, you got an emergency call and, you know, you had to go pick up a, a carload of penguins and you had to clear the car out of all the groceries. So you ran up to your house and you grabbed your bags and you just opened the door and you just reached in one by one for whatever dumb reason you were high on crystal meth and you decided to just one by one chuck everything throughout your house and then go pick up those penguins. So that right there is fragment, fragmented. You fragmented your house. Okay, so later on you're going to have to go back and spend some time and pick up everything. And let's say you wanted the, those bag of Doritos. Okay, so they might be on top of the kitchen um, refrigerator. They might be in the sink. They might be in the toilet. You know, you're going to have to search for where those are. Now, a lot of people have a lot of different tweaks that they have in Windows. They shut off file indexing. They, you know, there's so many different things, so many different setups. It's impossible to cover everything in this one video, but I just really want to cover the importances of it and what's happening. So you're going in there now and you have to declutter your house or defrag your house. So you grab everything up and you put everything in its right place. So now you know where everything is. You have created yourself a mental layout I and I on where everything is. Okay. And here's the thing about hard drives. Now when we're talking about mechanical hard drives, it is doing exactly that. It's taking all the information that's coming off of that CD, DVD, um, executable, however you're putting that information on the hard drive, and it's just chucking it all over the place. It's moving that to the, the it's moving the actuator to the next nearest empty location and just dropping it. It doesn't really care what's going on. So keep that in mind 
So now it's doing what I said about the groceries, and later on you're going to want to defrag that and put everything in order. Now look at this hard drive right here. See how fast it's going? Now it's searching. And not only is it searching, but this drive is actually indexed. It has a layout INI, and it's following it, and it's, it's, you know, looking for the particular program and putting it all together and throwing it in your RAM so you can run your application. But do you see how it's back and, you know, bouncing back and forth? Well, the reason why it's doing that is because of that platter effect, or that splatter effect, I should say. Now, even if... Let's just say, for instance, that seek time didn't matter. And, you know, it. let's just take it out of the equation totally. And let's just look at the fact that that arm was just working its little arm off, you know? So I don't care if your hard drive's rated for 50 million MBTF or MTBF, which is mean time between failure, the way hard drives are rated. It's still working. It's working a lot. So your hard drive is going to die before my hard drive because I keep my actuator pretty lazy. It doesn't have to do much. You know, it's right there. You know, indexing is on, um, which is a tweak a lot of people will have off. Teach their own. I'm not going to preach to you, although I should. So now let's get into the applications and let's open up Ultimate Defrag 3. Great application, my newest uh, defrag software. I've only had a couple of days to play with it. And this isn't to give you a, a full rundown of how everything works. But it is to cover enough of it to where you'll have a good understanding with it and show you a few tips and, more importantly, how to find what you need to find out real fast. My CPU is a neural net processor, a learning computer. The more contact I have with humans, the more I learn. What you're seeing here for the first time is you're seeing a disk. And this is how your platter is on your hard drive, as you just saw. And this hard drive has already been defragged. This is my FSX installation. And this hard drive here is my C drive, which has not been defragged. So you can see how everything's just thrown out about all over the place. This particular software has some cool features. You can go in here and you can choose fragmented files only, uh, consolidate folder file name, which a lot of people that use O&O, you're familiar with this. Um, recency, which is kind of like how your layout INI does it. And then volatile or volatility means um, if you click that, your house will blow up and your fridge will explode. So don't click on that. No, I'm kidding. I don't use it. I'm not going to talk about it. Um, auto mode isn't bad. You know, with every mode you have different um, ways you can set it up. You have different options and you should check all these out. You know, with auto mode selected, go into options and you have this type of thing. If I had file and folder name um, and I went into options, I don't have certain options, okay? So with auto mode, you can just go right into options and you can go, let's say, Put directories close to the MFT, and then respect layout I and I. I'll cover that in a minute. Um, very fast placement may leave small spaces. Um, if you have the time, uncheck that. Okay. Frag protect means it's going to kind of be working in the background, so it'll run in the background while you're um, doing your normal thing, including your simming, and keep things from getting as fragmented. The main thing is you don't want to have this checked, okay? Defrag when you go to sleep, you know, so uncheck that. You don't want free spaces. You're probably running out of hard drive space like I am. All right, so anyway, bam, respect layout I and I. This is something that I want for my C drive, not for my D drive, okay? And I'll explain that in a minute. And here you can go right up to here and you could say fast, faster, and then optimum. And you could just crank it. And you can see right here I'm already increasing, or potentially increasing, my overall performance by 271.7% uh, for my current drive data. And then compared with factory averages. So I can say, okay, I'm happy with that. I'm going to go into my folder options, uh, folder name options. And I can say respect archive. I don't use the archive 
on the drive I'm going to be working with. Uh, I do want this checked and that's the put directories close to my master file table. Respect high performance. Um, definitely want that checked. And complete high performance then stop. I do not want that checked. Again, I'm going to be doing this usually when I'm busy doing something else, so I don't mind waiting for perfection. So now the main thing that you want to do is go into your settings. So I'm going to go into my settings. I'm going to select my D drive. And my D drive, again, is where my FSX install is. And you could see that I have differences here between the two. And the main difference here is on my C drive, I have include files by wildcard. And a wildcard, what a wildcard is, is whenever you're searching for anything in your computer, let me go into my computer here and I want to find all my DLL files. I can do a shift 8, which is the asterisk, and then period. So that's telling Windows right now, I want you to find everything with whatever I'm going to put next. Now, if I don't know the extension, I could put another asterisk, and there's another wildcard. And it's going to find every file on my computer if I do that. So I'm going to say I will only want you to find my DLLs, okay? And then I can have it search, and it's going to find all my DLLs on my D drive. And it's going to keep looking and keep looking. I have a trillion DLLs. I counted them before I started this video. So that is a wildcard. So for my Windows operating system, I have that set. So I can say I could add dot bin if I wanted to. Okay, and it adds it to the list. I'm going to remove that because I don't care about that. I have MP4 on there right now because I have a lot of video editing to do and it's all in MP4 format. And you hear I have my EXEs, my system files, and my DLLs. Now all of these I'm telling it I want on the outer edge. All of them next on my MFT. Okay. Now let me go to my D drive and I have this unchecked. And for my D drive I have it unchecked because I'm doing a custom. Now here I have FSX and I have Dance. And FSX is my FSX installation and the folder I have Dance here I actually um, this is where I keep all my add-on scenery my you know own junk that I throw in there. So you can ch check it however way you want. I'm going to go ahead and clear my selections and I'm going to put this back and put that back. So this is how you would see it. Now I'm going to go to where my FSX install is. It's in the folder hanger. I'm going to collapse or expand that branch. I'm going to go to FSX. Now because I want that whole directory, I'm going to select that box. And I'm going to say over here by clicking that button. Now for Dan's, Let's say I don't do dance. Let's say I just want FS Genesis to be over there. Then I can go in here and I can just check the box for FS Genesis and then go over here. So it's only going to take that particular folder. And if I wanted to, I can uncheck that or I can remove that and I can go in here further and I could say just scenery. Okay. You know, I mean, you can micromanage this, which is so awesome micromanage it to death. So I get everything selected the way I want it and once I select it let's say my fraps videos here I want to put those over to and I'm gonna I don't want the fraps videos first I'm gonna put FSX priority so I'm gonna say FSX first so I just clicked on that and dragged it up and I'm gonna say fraps down at the bottom. Alright so I can do that I could do it that way. Another way I can do it is I can come down here and say strict placement sorted by folder name and then ascending or descending order. Now a lot of these options you're not going to remember and don't try to remember them. The point of this video is to show you how easy it is to try out all these different settings. So with all that said, I'm pretty much done talking about all of this. I do want to cover archive real quick and that is just if you have it on automatic, you can set your numerical value here and then how you want it to do whatever you have selected here. So right now I have it 50% least, least frequently used data. I must still be drunk from New Year's. Uh, I could also go here to 50 gigabyte or change this value or type in the value gigabyte of least used data or past days 
data was not used. So I could archive these. And the two drives I don't have hooked up right now, I want to be using that a lot because there's a lot of stuff I don't have any use for until another hard drive crashes. So I'm going to be taking all that data, moving it to here, while I move all the fast stuff, or the stuff that I want fast, to the outer edges. That's the beauty of this program. And down here, you can exclude certain files. I'll let you play around with that. And I'm running out of time. And respect layout I and I. Let's talk about that for a minute, because that's important. If I was on my C drive here, and I have very few programs installed here, and of course, like we talked about, not in my programs folder or my program 86 folder, and I have respect layout I and I checked, on my D drive, I do not. Now, this is a matter of preference for myself, and I'm going to explain why. My FSX installation is huge. Um, I don't want to have this checked because what a layout I and I is, is have you ever installed FSX and noticed that it's just terrible? You know, my last install was so much better. And then after a few days, wow, okay. I don't know what happened, but it just seems to be working itself out. Do you get that? You know, we all get that. Some are worse. Some people just keep throwing stuff in there and, you know, they run into problems. But for the most part, there is that mystery out there. Why is it just all of a sudden getting better? Well, one reason for that is your layout I and I. And what the layout I, the layout I and I is, is it's written to every few days. Windows is basically keeping an eye on you and saying, oh, he used that calculator tool 85 times. You know, so I'm going to make sure that I make that open faster for this guy next time. And I'm going to make sure this runs faster for him next time. So if you want your programs to be referenced by the layout I and I, check that. It's going to help the software a lot, especially for your C drive. Why I don't have it for my D drive? Well, let's say the last few days all I did was video editing, which is pretty much all I've been doing. Um, it's going to now be looking at those. It's going to be looking at those particular applications. Or let's just say I only had FSX on that drive. Well, again, I'm over 100 gig of software on that and let's say I just flew a week's worth of FTX Australia and then I defrag respecting the layout I and I and then when I load up FSX I want to now fly Aerosoft's you know Innsbruck approach um, it's not going to make a world of difference you're probably not going to ever see anything you'd probably only be able to measure it by milliseconds but it really depends on how much you got I don't want it to respect the layout I and I. I want it to go exactly how I told it to go. I want it to do my FSX files. I want it to do my scenery, my add-on scenery files. And then that's it. The rest of it, I don't care where you put it. It's still going to defrag it. But I want my most important files on the outside edges. Okay? Now, the beauty of all this and whatever you didn't understand and how to figure it out. Right now I have a flyout menu, which is my cluster viewer, okay? And what a cluster is, is each one of these little blocks here is a cluster. Okay, and right now it's not saying anything other than used. Now if I click on analyze, I do a quick analysis, and I click on a sector. Now it's seeing it. And the more you analyze, the better it is for defragging. So you should analyze a drive. Um, I'd say once a week, you know, even if you don't defrag it. Um, it really does make a difference. So three or four analysis before a defrag is good. At least that's what I've read. So anywho. Now you can see with the settings that I have selected, I'm going to select the very far outer edge here. You can see that I have hangar, FSX, sim objects, blah, 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 blah. But it's all my FSX files. Now the next row, again, FSX. I have a lot of FSX, so I'm going to go way out here. And I'm still, oh, nope. There we go. I'm finally in my add-on scenery. Right there is the difference here. So right here, from here to here is all FSX, and it's right there on the outer edge. It's right there on the fastest part of my 10,000 RPM Western Digital Velociraptor. And the rest of this up to however far is my... um 
other junk. And then I have my Adobe and my After Effects stuff. Okay, so how do you figure that out? Why waste so many hours to see if your settings are right? Simulation, baby. You're in here for simulation. It has simulation mode. This software was actually, I found this out from Ryan of the PMDG forum, that this software was actually written by a flight simmer. So, use simulation mode, baby. It's sweet. It's awesome. So, what it is, is I click on simulate. It puts simulation up here. I go by all my settings. Let's go to a different drive here. Let's go to C. Now I have it set up the way I have it set up. I'm going to click simulate, and I'm going to click start. So as long as simulate's up here and I click start, it's going to just be simulating. So it's going to run through all its options here. It's going to go through exactly how I told it. If I said to respect the layout I and I, it's doing that right now, and I do have that checked. So it's going to now go through a simulated time lapse type of thing, and it's going to put everything exactly in order. It's going to give me an estimated time. Um, I found this simulation to be very, very accurate. The only thing that I have seen that isn't really exactly accurate is the actual time that it gives you for simulation. But so far, knock on wood, the time has always been in my favor. So if it said two hours and 20 minutes, it finished in two hours and five. So it's it's no big deal. And it's, again, so far working out from in my favor, which is a first. So you see it's wrapping up and everything else. It's going to grab the last few files and everything has been said to be put where it's being put. Now I can click on a file and I can find out exactly where it is. And these right here are my system files, as you can probably not see. So be sure, by the way, you're watching this in full screen and with 1080p selected, it makes a difference. You morons out there that say, I can't see what you're doing. Yeah, because you're watching it in a window, you retard. So again, you click on this little guy and it tells you exactly what is there. My Windows files are all on the outer edge. So I can see whether or not my settings are doing what I wanted my settings to do. Do I want to change these around a little bit? Do I want to um, maybe switch to a different mode and try it? Sure. You know, give it a shot. You're in simulation mode. Whatever you see here is what you're going to get in the long run or the outcome. So it's okay not to understand anything I said. The biggest thing you need to understand is to be able to go in here, change a setting, and then run a quick simulation and see if it is the way you want to see it. Okay? And that's all I have to say about that. Until next time, bye bye